Hello PennDOT Community Traffic Safety Partners. Thank you for joining us for another video, which is being produced for you by the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia Center for Injury Research and Prevention. In this video, Chapter 11, we'll talk about measuring your program impact and how to design evaluation instruments by considering the key performance indicators that you want to have in your evaluation for your program. We'll talk about how to choose which performance measures or which performance indicators are right for you and we'll present you with some of the quantitative and qualitative methods that you can use to do that, and then provide you an example of what this looks like when you pull it all together for a program evaluation. Performance measures are used for several different purposes. For example, to set specific goals for your program, to connect your goals to actions and allocate resources, to monitor and evaluate your progress and to communicate your priorities, results, and the value of what you do to society. But perhaps the way that performance measures or key performance indicators are most important for your evaluation is that they can also track the progress of your program over time and help you to compare how your program operates across different sites and across different programs and populations. You may be familiar with some of these key performance measures, which are recommended by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. These include outcome measures, behavioral measures, and activity measures, and you might have seen these before. But there are some additional performance measures for teen driver programs specifically that go beyond measures of participation and satisfaction, which we think will be particularly helpful for you because they're specific, measurable, achievable, reachable, and time-bound. These include measuring the attitudes, knowledge, and skills of your participants, judging their overall behavior change, their self-efficacy, the frequency with which they engage in certain behaviors or disengage in certain behaviors, and their behavioral intentions. Let's talk a little bit more about what each of these mean. If you're looking to measure attitudes with your program, then you're looking to understand a relatively stable belief or feeling that your program participants have about a particular concept or a person or an object. And we infer somebody's attitudes by observing their behaviors. If we're looking to influence individuals' knowledge, then we want to increase their awareness or their familiarity with a certain concept. If we want to increase their level of ability or expertise with regard to driving, then we'd be looking to change their skills. If we want to affect behaviors, then we're interested in the way in which an individual acts or conducts themselves. Self-efficacy refers to the judgment of one's capability to accomplish a certain level of performance. So if we want to increase the likelihood that somebody is going to engage in a particular behavior, we often want to start by increasing their self-efficacy or their self-confidence to do that particular behavior. Frequency is a performance measure which refers to the rate at which a particular behavior occurs, perhaps how often somebody does something or doesn't do something. And behavioral intentions refers to the person's perceived likelihood or their subjective probability that they will engage in a given behavior, which we're asking them about in our program. What teen driving issues could you evaluate with these measures? For example, seatbelt use of the driver and the passenger speeding practices, distracted driving through phones or by other passengers in the car, driving skills and experiences, impaired driving, and drowsy driving. Now that you've chosen your performance indicators, how are you going to collect information about them so that you know the degree of change that your program is causing for these performance indicators? You have two basic options. Remember that quantitative methods are those that are going to express your results in numbers. They'll help you to answer the questions, how many, how much, or how often. While qualitative methods are those that will express their results in words, ideas, and concepts. They'll answer the questions, how and why. This table provides you with a brief snapshot of some of the options that are available to you for quantitative and qualitative data collection. We'll talk in more detail about these in chapters 12 and 13. Quantitative data that might be helpful for your measuring your performance indicators for your evaluation includes surveys, record reviews, indicator data, GIS or geographical app data, and performing an environmental assessment. Qualitative methods that might be helpful for you include open-ended survey interviews, 
in-depth interviews, diaries of your participants, focus groups, observations, and newspapers or other media. Again, we'll talk more about these in chapters 12 and 13. This table shows you one of many options that we have designed for you in your resource book to get you started with the types of questions that you could include for your performance indicators. For example, if you chose your performance indicator was distracted driving, you might ask questions like, for self-efficacy, how likely are you to do or say something to your driver if they're talking on a handheld cell phone while driving? For attitudes about distracted driving, do you support a state law banning talking on a handheld cell phone while driving? Behaviors toward distracted driving might include questions like, when you receive a text message while driving, how often do you answer the text? And for behavioral intentions toward distracted driving, we might ask somebody to rate the agreement or disagreement that they have with statements like, I would be more likely to give up using my cell phone while driving if my mom or dad made me do it. My friends gave up their cell phones while driving. I got a discount on my insurance, etc. Again, please see the resource book for a number of examples of different types of questions that match different key performance indicators that we feel would be most helpful that you would be likely to use for your program evaluations. What does this look like when we pull it all together? Recall from our earlier chapters that our programs have an overall goal, for example, to reduce teen driver crash rates. And as a follow-up to that goal, we have a basic performance measure, which is that we're looking to measure distracted driving behaviors. We hope that you will have developed some SMART objectives, objectives which are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. You can learn more about SMART objectives in our earlier chapters. As we've been discussing in this chapter, you may also have different measurement categories. Perhaps you're interested in looking at the frequency of distracted driving from participants in your program, their attitudes towards distracted driving, or their behavioral intentions towards distracted driving. This table shows you some of the questions that you might want to ask under each of these categories. This concludes Chapter 11, Measuring Program Impact and Designing Evaluation Instruments. In our next chapter, we'll get started with quantitative data collection methods that you can use for your program evaluation. Thank you so much for watching.